God is Aphrodite. See, apples are one of the fruits of Aphrodite. My fruits. So, um, well, if you're hungry, I'll share with you. Hmm. Would you like some? Let's see. If you said yes, that was a love spell. Love spells can be anything. They're really just intention added to something that you perceive as a ritual. So, for example, if you're ever in a quick fix, you know, a love at first sight type scenario, and you want to know interest in you, take an apple, hold it, if you are, say, in a grocery store, and you see someone and your eyes meet, and all of a sudden, you see their souls, and you feel that they saw you too, you really saw each other, and maybe you recognize them, who's to say that you weren't lovers in the past life, well, no matter what the situation, find an apple, if you don't have one, and take a bite, and then offer it to the other person. If they accept, it means that they have some interest, and it's sort of an inviting love spell. It's an invitation for love spell. It's very ethical, because they can say no, you can't force feed them apple. Um, that wouldn't be a loving relationship if your first encounter was, would you like some apple? And they say no, and you're like, eat my apple. Aphrodite does not condone um, any sort of forced love, ever. So, apples. I'm not actually going to share. I'm a goddess, and this is an offering to me, so. <laughs> I hear that all the time. They call me coy. They call me sorts of things. But really, I am just the essence of love and beauty, and I share that with everyone indiscriminately. My husband, Hephaestus, has really just grown used to it. <laughs> um, but <laughs> he loves me nonetheless, and I love him. But I also love everyone. So, times have changed since ancient Greece. Speaking of apples, um, I am going to share some love spells that involve me, because I'm Aphrodite, and apples, if you get a shrine for Aphrodite, so if you don't have one, feel free to build one, I'm always growing my, um, it's greatly offensive to me when someone says that they don't have time for love, or that they don't care about love or romance, because that is who I am. That is what I exist for. And it's, I'm one of the top eight god, god and goddesses. Uh, I live on Mount Olympus. The top eight are the things that we really need in our lives. Apollo is music and sunlight. And I am love and beauty. And every person needs those things, no matter what else is going on in our lives. And that's why I am. I'm known as the Lady of Flowers and Goddess of Love and Beauty. So, all right. So, if you don't have a shrine to Aphrodite, that quick apple spell I taught you will work. Um, another trick: um, draw a circle with sea salt. I love the ocean. I was born there. From well, that's a that's a story. <laughs> Perhaps that's why I am the way I am. But, um, draw a circle with sea salt, and use seashells, like this giant seashell I happen to have, because I'm a goddess and people offer me things all the time. So, use seashells to, um, four of them, to denote the four directions, and just talk to me. I will listen. Another interesting thing about seashells is they can be used as aphrodisiacs. Just put them around the room subtly. They're very, um, amorous, like oysters. Same with rose quartz.
Mr. Bybee. Lots of good rose quartz. I would be wearing rose quartz, but I'm wearing pearls because I'm feeling very ocean friendly today. I miss it. I need to miss it again. So, all right. Um, the colors pink, red, and purple all feed passion and love. Color therapy is a great way to draw new love into your life. Look at the colors that surround you. Are they dull? Are they boring? If they are, and you want something new, then change them. Or if you're in a relationship and you'd like to commit more and settle down, try green. Green is the color of fertility and also everlasting, unconditional love. So, and flowers. Flowers are great. <laughs> Look at me holding a flower and an apple, and I'm just a picture of fertility and love and beauty and all things wonderful. They're all wonderful. And if I didn't rule love and beauty, if I were the goddess of the forge, I would love metal. And I would talk about metal. But that's my husband of justice. So, anyway. Let's see. So, as I was saying, if you don't have a shrine to Aphrodite, and you would like to draw more love into your life, by all means, build a shrine. Because what better deity? Freya's good. I recommend Freya, if not me. But, um, choose whatever deity you like. Preferably me, because I'm Aphrodite. So, um, if you would like to build a shrine to me, mermaids, um, doves, apples, those are my things. I have some other things. I think bunnies would work. I like bunnies. They're okay. Um, seashells, of course. Any sort of seashell. I really do like mermaids. I often take the form of a mermaid or just the statue of a beautiful woman. Or even a picture of yourself because we are all beautiful and we all have every quality that I possess comes from humanity. Humanity made me. And I am a reflection of the beauty of love that is found all over the world. And that's why I'm so happy. Because there's so much love and there's so much beauty everywhere. So, anyway, just build a little shrine. And once you have that, there are two different spells that I personally prefer. One, get three apples and place them on the shrine. Ask me to charge them for you, and I will. I'll charge them with love, and offer them to the person of your choosing. Again, this is a very ethical love spell. I've grown since the days of uh, Adonis, <laughs> whose face I loved best when white, yet best when red, as Shakespeare put it. <laughs> I am not ashamed of my actions. <laughs> Adonis is a beautiful man. Ah, listen to me, old woman. <laughs> so, if you put those three apples on the altar, I will, you know, charge them with love energy for you, and then offering them to the person. So, give them the apple, honestly, and you'll see where your love goes from there. Another thing you can do is um, put an item, something you'd like to charge, like an amulet, or just a token, a necklace will work, anything really. Just place that on my altar as well. And make sure you let me know that it's not for me, that it's for you and that I'm charging it for you. Otherwise, I might grow attached. And you don't want to, you know, anger or upset me. I get very attached sometimes. So, yeah, I will charge a necklace or any sort of amulet, talisman, oil. So go ahead and do that, and I'll take care of it. Mm. So good. So, another thing, speaking of food, and altars, and love, aphrodisiacs. Named after me, so obviously they're love-inducing. Oftentimes they're food, so I would recommend apples are pretty good, peaches are better, 
because peaches are very sensual. Uh, you can cut them in half, spray them with water, or you can cut them into slices or the sliced canned peaches um, and cook them. Strain out the juice or keep the juice if you like it and add cinnamon and just cook it until it's nice and cinnamony and that is very much an aphrodisiac. Anything really that you enjoy, anything that brings pleasant memories, um, rose scented things are aphrodisiacs, chocolate is a great aphrodisiac, and I do have chocolate scented with rose and flavored as well. That would be a good aphrodisiac. Um, bananas, also full of potassium. Avocado, I believe, increases the libido. Um, let's see. What else? I didn't think I would know. There are just so many. Cloves. Another spell comes to mind. Um, this is... Hmm. Not really sure. This is a good spell to share with you, but I'll share it. I, don't think it's a binding spell. I don't do binding spells. Um, suck on a clove. I know they're really strong, but do what I mean. And not a cigarette, an actual clove. Um, put it under your tongue when you're expecting company. And that company should be the person you are romantically involved with. And once they arrive, go out the back door. If you're in an apartment, go to the balcony. It's kind of the same thing. Um, spit out that clove. Put a new clove in your mouth, go open the front door, and kiss them with a new clove in your mouth. Um, I think it's just an attraction type aphrodisiac thing. Let's see. Hmm. <sighs> a bath, bathing, all sorts of beautification. Do you know why beautification and love are connected? The more beautiful we feel, the more positive our energy is, and the more attractive we're to others. And really, in order to experience love, we have to feel good. We can't, you know, have a terrible day and think about the person you love and still... It's, it's, it's really hard to feel both emotions. But once you feel good about yourself and your life, it's very easy to feel love. Um, Certain jewels, rose quartz, draws love, rubies, increase passion, also anger, so um, that's why red isn't the best color because it adds passion to everything. So if you have a hot temper or if your person has a hot, hot temper, it's better to go for purple, which increases the passion in the romance area, not necessarily anywhere else. Um, this ring. I gave Helen of Troy a magic ring, and I shouldn't have, in hindsight, based on what happened, but the, the ring was engraved with the image of Pan, who, if you're familiar with mythology, you may know I'm very close to Pan. So, but having a ring engraved with Pan, or any, some, any sort of thing that's really romantically symbolic, um, you could have my image engraved on a ring. The ring with the image of Pan that I gave Helen of Troy, it meant that any man she fancied would fall madly in love with her. And I've stopped handing out talismans like that to, um, just anyone. <laughs> Although she was very beautiful, which is, of course, one of the reasons I gave it to her, because she acknowledged her beauty. So many women in ancient Greece, and even now, hid their beauty. In Athens, Women who went out into the marketplace without a male escort covered themselves with a white sheer, sheer veil, and men pretended that they didn't exist. They just ignored them, and the women walked about doing their shopping with white veils. And hiding their beauty is, to me, again, offensive. It's just, we all have beauty, and we all have the right to shine, and we all have the right to be loved. We exist. That's all the prerequisite you need for love. You exist, I love you. You exist and I love you. The Aphrodite promise. <laughs> so, apples, again, perfect. Um, let's see. Well, <laughs> let's 
Galaxy. So, since it was just recently a holiday celebrating love, for those of you who have people, celebrate that. Celebrate each other. And celebrate yourselves. Um, which is what I was going to say for those of you who don't have significant others. Celebrate yourselves. All of you, whether you're with someone or not, celebrate yourselves. And if you do have someone else in your life, celebrate them as well. And even if you don't have someone reciprocating love in your life, you can celebrate the other person. Celebrate them. Tell them, I appreciate you, and I appreciate your existence, and I love you. And this is just advice from a centuries-old goddess of love. <laughs> what do I know? Uh, I know, it's my personality. <laughs> so, let's get comfy. Mm. Traditionally, I would recommend red apples, maybe golden delicious. But Granny Smith are my favorite, and you always want to go with your favorite apple when choosing an aphrodisiac. Always choose your favorite. If you don't like patchouli, never use patchouli. If you love lavender, like I do, use lavender all the time. Use whatever makes you feel good about yourself. Okay, so, love. How do you define love? Love is the many splendid thing. Love lifts us up where we belong. All you need is love. No, 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 I'm not gonna. <laughs> I will not quote musicals at you. Even if they are musicals with no original songs. Unless Spectacular Spectacular is original. Hmm. So, well, love is caring about yourself and doing things for yourself. Love is also caring about other people, but in order to do that, first you have to take care of yourself. You can't be happy by making other people happy. It never works because sometimes they want you to do things that you know will not make you happy um trying to please someone else just doesn't work you need to work on yourself first and maintain your own happiness and then go from there and if every person did that we wouldn't rely on others for our own happiness hmm. and it's particularly important in relationships. I think that if Festus <laughs> depended on me for his happiness, he would be sorely disappointed because he would probably want me to, well for one, he wouldn't be happy with my philandering, but he doesn't have any expectations from me. He loves himself, and he takes care of himself, and I do the same, and I do love my husband, so I think he's happy with how things are. As happy as a crippled, you know, God can be. He's the only crippled God, and yet I love him. So, and I could have been with Apollo, or Aries, or... I mean, we're all incestuous on Mount Olympus, so what's the harm? <laughs> Could have been with Zeus. Except Tara would kill me. She rules jealousy. The jealous wife archetype. Whereas I'm the lover. Hmm. So.
What is it you wish for? Do you wish for grace or beauty? Do you wish for love? Do you wish for the love that you want for a certain person? Because if you do, I'm going to tell you now. Never try a spell to get a particular person's affection without their consent. If someone doesn't love you naturally in a romantic way, then you don't want that person. You want someone who will see you for you and love you. You don't need someone to be coerced by magic into loving you. Because that love will not be as satisfying. It's the love that comes naturally. Trust me. Hmm. So, if you're coming to me for love, either self-love and a boost of confidence and beauty and confidence because of all of those things that you are, then I, I'm immortal. I have seen all that everyone is. And you are all amazing. So, if you're coming to me for that, or if you're coming to me for a love spell, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to feel what it feels like to have that thing that you want. Again, if you're imagining it with a specific person who, you know, may or may not have the same feelings for you, don't imagine that person. Imagine what it feels like to love that person and imagine what it would feel like to have that love in return. And... I want you to just close your eyes and keep feeling what it feels like to be loved, to know that you are beautiful, to know that you are loved. And I want you to know that as you're feeling those feelings, you already have those things. Nothing changes other than you and your perspective and how you feel. You can feel lonely in a relationship. You can feel happy without a relationship. And you can feel loved without a relationship. So, however you want to feel, don't hold yourself back. Don't say, I will be happy when. Say, I am happy now. And close your eyes or look at something beautiful that inspires happiness in you. And feel all of those feelings now. You already have them. Everything is at your fingertips. You're human, and that's marvelous. And you can feel whatever it is you can imagine you can feel. It's easier if you think of someone you love sometimes. And if it's hard to... Well, never mind. So, if you are looking for a relationship, know that you are loved by everyone. On some level of our core, we all are connected. Quantum physics, it's true. And know that I, Aphrodite, love all of you. And the universe loves you. And the universe supports you. And that's why we have air and gravity and so many other things. <laughs> And if you want to feel beautiful and confident, feel those things now. Too many women talk to me and men and say, just help me, you know, make my hair more lustrous or help me lose weight or help me gain weight in certain areas. And they don't feel beautiful because see flaws with themselves. And it's not, I'll love myself in five pounds from now. 
love yourself now and you'll be amazed at the magic that that brings about in your life. That's the real magic, loving yourself and allowing yourself to have and do the things that you want. Aphrodite out. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm still here. Want to know a secret? My favorite song is Beautiful by the Go-Go's, and I listen to it every morning, and I recommend listening to it in your morning sequence. Just makes you feel alive. <laughs> it's, you know, 80s music, but it pretty much captures the Aphrodite way of living, so I recommend that song. This is sleepover mode, Aphrodite. Girl talk and close up and eating an apple. Sounds about right. <laughs> mm. Mm. So, well. <laughs> You've obviously come to me for a reason, so I'm going to take a wild guess, and you came to me for love, or maybe for beauty, since I rolled those two things. <laughs> well, the secret is, love yourself. You can't draw something to yourself that you can't experience on your own. It's law of attraction. So. Hmm. So. If you're coming to me for beauty, I want you to feel beautiful now. I want you to look at yourself in the mirror. And I want you to look in your eyes. I want you to search your soul in the mirror. Because eyes really are the windows to the soul. I don't care if it sounds cheesy. It's true. So, look yourself in the eyes. And if you can't see yourself as beautiful at first, find something you like about yourself. I like my collarbones. I like my ears. I like my nose. I like my hair. Find something that you like about yourself, or remember things that other people have said they like about you, and then think of those. And if strangers have ever stopped to tell you look, you look nice, think of those times. Write them down. Keep a journal of things that are confidence-based in you. It's important. <laughs> so, do that. And maybe start on a Friday. Friday. I rule Friday. Well, technically I share it with Freya, for whom it is named. But Friday is a day of love. So, if you're looking for beauty, look in yourself. You already have it. <sighs> My advice for you as the goddess of love and beauty, stop every once in a while, smell the roses, smell any flower really, that, and as you're appreciating flowers and nature and beauty, appreciate yourself, take yourself out every once in a while and just do something for you, specifically for you. Trying to please everyone else causes stress, and it's impossible to please everyone. But if you please yourself, and everyone else is doing that, taking care of their own needs first, maintaining their own happiness, then when you do find someone to share with, you're both being your authentic selves, 
and the love that you share will be authentic. It won't be based on trying to please each other, because you'll already have been happy before. And that's what Hephaestus and I have. And we're both, we live our own lives, and we choose to love each other. Hmm. <laughs> It's been great talking to you again. I look forward to seeing a shrine. And mm. I'm free to talk anytime. Just think of Aphrodite and whatever concerns you have, and I'm there. And maybe I'll come again and make another video and talk some more about magical things. So, well, I'm going to finish my apple and go see a festus. So, have a lovely night or day, whichever part of the year you're on. Know that you are loved that you are always worthy of being loved, simply because you exist, and you are who you are, and you are a unique individual in this huge world, and that's a beautiful thing.